Yeah, I'm Mark Kriego, and I am speaking at the Biometrics 2013 conference. The uh, title of my uh, presentation is called Old Bill to Biometrics Bill, which has to do with the idea that officers, police officers in London used to be called Old Bill. The idea was that criminals and other people who wanted to do bad things would say, hey, be careful, Old Bill is coming. And this was sort of a nickname that sort of became a watchword around how police officers could be evaded. And particularly the old bill, the police officer of the past, could be evaded because in my impression, and in our impression, they didn't have all the tools and the resources necessary to get the right information at the right time to be able to identify who people were, what their history was, and whether or not they were a danger to the officer or a suspect in an active investigation. So this is why Old Bill versus Biometrics Bill sees a transition of the police officer from the traditional methods of the past, of trying to look at behavior alone, trying to understand if that person had been, oh, in my memory, somebody who was on the, the listing of pages of the, of the wanted criminals, and trying to sort out who is uh, you know, going to do me harm based upon my gut, my intuition. Now we think officers have very good intuition and gut. We think that they're trained to understand people very well. But what we really need to do is we need to give officers all the modern tools and technologies, the ability to connect to his, uh, to his precinct, to his, to his headquarters, and be able to get the right information at the right time. To be able to, instead of after the fact, identify who, somebody who may have committed a crime after we booked them, to understanding up front about somebody who may also be a threat to my safety. So by using identification techniques today, I mean we have fingerprints and I think fingerprints are the most common. But today also the FBI and other organizations are pushing the envelope on facial recognition and other types of recognitions like scars, marks and tattoos and irises and even voice prints other types of uh, approaches that can help them more quickly identify who people are. And some of these technologies have moved very, very aggressively and rapidly over the past few years. Whereas when I started in this industry 10 plus years ago, facial recognition was very imprecise, lots of false positives. And if the data is not good, or if the results aren't good, and the officer has to question the results, then it's as if they aren't there at all. But today, the facial recognition technologies have improved dramatically. Camera technologies have improved dramatically. And the ability to network and pull information together across the board and provide the officer just what they need in time, in situ, in the right place, uh, is, is, has accelerated rapidly. Therefore, the police officer of today and of the future is no longer old Bill, but we can call him or her biometrics bill. And with that in mind, biometrics bill is empowered with, with uh, cameras and uh, microphones and obviously fingerprint sensors, iPhones. I mean, today the iPhone has a fingerprint sensor in it. That's not quite ready for the use that we see today within criminal sort of fingerprinting because it's specific to you and it requires a fairly special approach. But there are other technologies. I can take my iPhone with a very high quality camera, snap a picture, have it automatically transmitted to the precinct, comes back to you with a result, this person's on a watch list, is a danger. And how much faster that is than being able to say, oh, I don't know. Some of the uh, areas of fingerprints and other things have also been of concern to privacy advocates and others in, in opposition to what we do with the modern police officer. But we believe as the technology becomes more natural in use, particularly around facial recognition technology, that being able to have an officer with a camera located on his or her body, being able to uh, use that, that camera to be able to recognize people, I know there's some new technology out there that we're investigating, the Google Glass, for example. The ability to have something that's unobtrusive, being able to talk to somebody, and while I'm talking to somebody, it's recognizing who that person is, and here's the criminal history of that person. While I'm maintaining eye contact with the, with the, with the criminal, and I understand what may be you know, my own danger, if I could be alerted in that sort of way about dangers ahead of time, then I, as an officer, can be more effective at my job. I can concentrate on where the threats really lie 
and be able to aid those citizens where there's no threats at all. And being able to make that decision fast and being able to understand the type of data necessary to make that decision, making sure that the data is, is together. And when you look at these problems collectively, for example, there's a massive amount of data that, that is behind any sort of policing organization. And we're seeing technologies like big data and the ability to sort down analytics into, into a, a comprehensive view of the individual as being extremely important in this field. If I can get the right information about you, Richard, while we're having this conversation, then perhaps, and, and being authorized to do so, if I am, and making sure that we're following all the requisite laws, but more importantly, that I'm able to help you meaningfully. Let's say, for example, you are an epileptic or you have some sort of seizure problem. Rather than interpreting that as being a violent crime, maybe I can get you the right medical attention you need to be able to do the things that you need to do. That's the type of intelligence that helps police officers interact with their community more effectively. The police officer and the police organization of the future is modernized with that integrated understanding of information. It pulls together all the requisite resources together, to, coupled with strong identification using biometrics and other techniques, to be able to understand quickly what we need to do as officers to be able to solve crimes, to be able to protect citizenry, to be able to help people effectively as, as is in our charge as police officers.